this is, I believe, our third video uh, topics from a hat. So we had the the four agreements and the sleep. Yes. And this one. So this is our third topic from a hat. Yes. Uh, and we picked, if you didn't watch the video last time, we picked uh, Dr. Paul Saladino Yay. as our topic from a hat. So yes. why don't you tell us a little bit about who Paul Saladino is? I'm going to, but first I just want to say I'm going to do something really annoying that all YouTubers do to you guys. And that is to ask you to like and subscribe and share and all that fun stuff because it does help get out information and stuff like that. And we really want to transition this from just doing our kind of fun little, oh, hey, we did this video to maybe something a little bit more than that. So if you could do that, we'd really appreciate it. So, but now I will tell you about Dr. Paul Saladino. All right. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited too. So just to give a little bit of a background, just really quickly on Chris and I, we have done a carnivore diet. What are you eating? I call this turf and turf. It's a 16-ounce T-bone and a 24-ounce porterhouse. Before. Um, and Chris has autoimmune issues, so that was really something that was recommended. A lot of times, if, if he's doing something, I'll try it with him and vice versa. So uh, Paul Saladino is definitely known in that space, mm -hmm. but he's also known for being a little bit of a heretic <laughs> in the... <laughs> In the carnivore realm, oh, I think yeah. I think that he would probably um, like that description of himself because he definitely does. Just he, I love the way that he talks about um, radical health. It has all sorts of roots. I mean, the etymology, the word radical is interesting at the root, the radix. But I think that for me, it's just it's it's just living fully. Um, there's this kind of cliched expression that people talk about these days that, you know, we don't have a healthcare system. We have a disease management system mm. and health is not just the absence of disease. Mm. So I think that I agree with that. Health is not the absence of disease. Radical health is the adjective that I've put on the word health to give people the idea that like your life should be vibrant. Um, your life should be vital. Your life should be colorful in, in a metaphorical sense. And it should be, um, you know, really remarkable in, in all the ways. And that's one of my, I was like, oh, I love that. And I love that idea. So, um, so yes, now I'll give you a background on Paul Saladino. He, um, obviously a doctor, he, um, just his health diet type journey. He says that he was a vegan, um, then became paleo for a long time. Uh, then was carnivore for, I think, a year and a half, two years. Uh, he wrote a book called The Carnivore Code. And then he started to experience some issues, some sleeping problems, uh, electrolyte imbalances. And I, th I kind of feel like I was telling you this earlier. He's the people that the carnivore... Carnivore people who, uh, the disaffected carnivores <laughs> go to Paul Saladino um, because he really, uh, he's done so much, like he's done, to me, just watching a ton of his videos, which I've done for this video that we're doing today, he's um, really dive, he's, he's dived into some territories that other people don't seem to want to go to. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what attracted me to, to his channel um so he he does something now uh even though he's called the carnivore md he actually does something that he calls an animal-based diet which is um animal meat organs stuff like that all that good stuff uh, raw dairy and then he incorporates fruit as well so i incorporated fruit and honey in my diet maybe two and a half three years ago now and that's really the part and that pisses people off. <laughs> fruit, fruit and honey and maple syrup. Oh, fruit and honey. Yes, I'm sorry. Fruit That's and okay. Honey and maple syrup. But I guess if you want to get technical, carnivore people, honey is carnivore. True. It is an animal. <laughs> it is an animal product. So. And I did, I did want to say too, like you know, on our carnivore journey, we experienced some of those things. Or actually, all yeah. of those things. We all I had things. all 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 kinds of trouble with sleep. Um, I had oh, heart palpitations. Heart palpitations were the one. worst, and you know, you kind of feel like. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I having a heart attack right now? Yeah. But it's the, the the electrolyte imbalance that... Not and you to have mention to... the pooping. Right, well, yeah, Sorry. and the pooping. Stop pooping. 
<laughs> yeah, and it's kind of like it's it's and it's funny if we're going to talk about poop. It's Let's you know it's poop. one way or the other. It was either constipated or it was diarrhea. Yeah, and you know those that doesn't make for a happy lifestyle for us. No, um, and I get it. Hey, carnivore people. But, Before you start hating, yeah. I know there's an adaptation phase. I got that. Yeah, I we're, understand we're that. that. <laughs> totally got you. But, but what you end up having to do yeah. is is, <laughs> is supplement then your diet with over the counter supplements. And right. yes, there are good supplements and bad supplements, but sure. that's not the way that your body your you know your body was not designed for supplements. Your body was designed to get its nutrition through food. Right. So um, I thought we'd go over kind of his. Pillars, okay. maybe. Mm-hmm. Besides, like, so that's the basics of the animal-based diet. Um, meat, organs, raw dairy, fruit, honey, maple syrup. Delicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I, I did write, write down some of his pillars. So I'll, I'm going to take the, um, what he asks people to take out of their diet first. Um, so this is just really, really great advice for anybody on any kind of diet. I don't care. Vegan, paleo. Keto, carnivore, whatever. Yeah, these four things you can do on almost any diet. <laughs> I think this except this, for vegan, but no, oh yeah, the last one, <laughs> the the first three. <laughs> the first three you can definitely do, no matter who you who you are. Right. So the first thing that he asks people to do, um, to take out of their diet, is to get rid of seed oils. Mm. I mean, he's got a video, lots of videos <laughs> on seed oils and how um, bad they are. These seed oils were originally created as machine lubricants and they should have stayed that way. Seed oils are horrible for humans. They are very high in linoleic acid that accumulates in your cell membranes and your adipose tissue and contributes to oxidative stress, eventually insulin resistance, all sorts of problems with seed oils. Get them out of your diet full stop. And um, it also included, uh, I wanted to make sure because, and he did mention this, like um, olive oil. And avocado oil and stuff like that. I think he said avocado oil may might be meh, um, and even olive oil to a certain extent. But he's like, it can it's mixed with other oils, which I'd heard I'd heard that before yeah. as well. He no- normally looks for foods that are less than three and ideally less than one percent linoleic acid. Hmm. A seed oil starts at 12 to 24 percent linoleic acid, so it's really high in the substance that's messing up your cells inside your body. So it's no bueno. And just another, just <laughs> I mean, I guess we could just say another, you know, like canola oil. There's no such thing as a canola plant. It's yeah. actually a rapeseed plant, which people yeah. don't know. So that was that was interesting. That's interesting. That so yeah, so when you hear the term rapeseed, that is canola oil. And. I don't know. Who wants to eat something called rapeseed? Exactly. So. Not me. Anyway. <laughs> so the next thing that he wants you to take out of your diet is high fructose corn syrup. And this one should be kind of a no-brainer for most people who are in the healthy eating, you know, um, like people who want to be in that space or in your life. It sneaks into foods you are eating, things like Gatorade, Powerade, Coca-Cola in the United States contains high fructose corn syrup. Uh, Ketchup contains high fructose corn syrup. A lot of salad dressings contain high fructose corn syrup. Some energy bars contain high fructose corn syrup. You should read the labels because high fructose corn syrup is not the same and it looks to be much more problematic for humans than regular sugar, which is interesting. Uh, I think we got rid of that stuff a long time ago, actually. That one's kind of been well known, and hopefully you just don't eat it. It's bad yeah. for you. <laughs> it's bad, and it's especially it's especially bad for your kids. Um, yes. You know, kids get a ton of high fructose corn syrup in the foods yeah. that they eat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and another thing on high fructose corn syrup, real quick, was a study that he had uh, done on high fructose corn syrup in soda. I don't think soda. he did it. He, he didn't do it. I mean, <laughs> he, he, read rev- it. <laughs> he read it. He reviewed it. Um, a, a study on high fructose corn syrup and soda, and they found that when they actually broke down the high fructose corn syrup using a, dig- a simulated digestive process, that the carb count inside of that was as much as five times the amount that was listed on the can. Mm. So you're looking, I think it's 40 grams of, of carbs in a can of Coke with high fructose corn syrup. You're talking about 200 grams of carbs, five times the calories. That's you know five, 600 calories in one can of soda. So I, I think that that's, that's really just, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad too. Yeah. <laughs> Third one is getting rid of artificial sweeteners. 
And this, I will just say, coming from a major league keto background, um, we did keto for a long time. <laughs> and that it was encouraged in that community to do all of the talls, the xylitols, the erythritols, you know. I don't think maltitol, maybe. Mm, I don't know. I don't remember that one. But definitely those two and sometimes stevia as well. And that's just problematic. I it, it was so funny to me, just a little sidebar of like, I can't eat fruit, but I can make you these chocolate chip cookies with almond flour and xylitol. And that, that works for keto, right? Yeah. It's... It doesn't. Not, not really for no, people who were doing it. Like hardcore, but and we did do very hardcore keto where we just cut out all that stuff as well. Yeah. But I, I guess what I'm saying is it definitely was something that was encouraged. I don't know if encouraged is the right word, but like, oh yeah, that's oh, fine. It's fine. So much better right. than sugar. Yeah. Well, his contention is that maybe sugar itself, um, sucralose, is not not as bad, and that is. Be careful. Cover your ears. If you're, if you're offended here, just cover your ears. So it's going to be okay. It's, it, But it does, like, it messes with my mind, too. Yeah, okay? I know. Because we've it been does. in that we low-carb we space. There. We were there. Yeah, because we've been in that low-carb space for a long time. So, spoiler alert, we've been doing this diet for a couple of weeks now, and it is very, like, messed with your mind a little bit. I'm like, I'm eating, I'm eating honey. It's okay. <laughs> I'm eating fruit. We have to comfort each other. We hold each other. <laughs> a little and, bit. You know. A little bit because, yeah. uh, you know, it's just, it's a funny thing to get used to one thing and then to be like, hey, if you're feeling these things, the the heart palpitations, the muscle cramps, um, you know, the not sleeping well, maybe try to add a little bit of fruit and you're like, oh, fruit, but I can eat that keto junk gluten-free crap that's in the grocery store and I don't feel that way and right. I think that's that's messed up so that's another thing that I really love about him is that helping people kind of break break free of that feeling and I will, I will say this like if you're keto and you love it and you like he always says if you're thriving go for it yeah I'm really here speaking to the people who are like yeah <laughs> try that not working for me dog yeah <laughs> <laughs> No good. So, um, so the last, the last thing that won't work for vegans is um, getting rid of vegetables. <clears throat> Very controversial. Not so much controversial for us. Just and for carnivores. Well, and for carnivores, no. Yeah. Um, I think I mentioned before, like I read the book Toxic Superfoods by Sally K. Norton, which is all about oxalates. Um, there's plenty of carnivore people who talk about plants. Uh, I think Anthony Shafee has a very funny video where he's like, plants are trying to kill you, stuff like that. Um, the title of my talk is uh, Plants Are Trying to Kill You, which of course is a very provocative uh, title and, and is meant to be. Uh, we need to remember as well that there are other uh, chemicals and, to and toxins that exist in the food that we eat that can also cause harm. Plants are living organisms and they like to stay living organisms. If you eat them, they die. And so they have defenses just like any other living organism. Um, so I think that's not controversial for um, the carnivore people among us. The, some keto people really want to hang on to that broccoli and cauliflower stuff like that and more power to you i can't eat that stuff yeah. and we really learned that kind of early on like mm -mm, and that is not that's not going well yeah. and, by, <laughs> and so that, just so everybody's clear the definition of vegetables are the leaves the stems and the roots yes of the plant right so the non-fruit pieces of plant so yeah. things like squash uh avocado those are actually Fruit, not vegetables. Right. Um, you know, cucumbers, all of those things are fruit. Yes. Um, and as long as you're taking the seeds and the skins off, you're going to be in good shape to eat those things. Yes. Well, I shouldn't say that. If they work for you, you're <laughs> going to be in good shape to eat those right. things. Right. Yes, because you have to do what works for you. Right. So those are the things that he asks um, people to take out. So. Yeah. And so I'll talk about the things that, that you add into your diet. Um, and again, you can... He talks about this too. You can phase these things however you want. You know, you don't have to go all in, you know, right away. You can start to, to phase in. Guess who did go all in? That would be us. Yeah, that would be us. <laughs> uh, you know. Ashley's kind of an all in person and I just I'm all so, or nothing, baby. You know. 
or nothing. <laughs> but you can phase these in and out. So, but uh, I would definitely say like the first two and probably three of Ashley's list, I would start immediately. But mm-hmm. what I'm going to talk about, you can do, you know, as it works for you. Um, so the first thing that you need to add is organ meat. Um, this is something that we're still working on doing. Um, it's we don't have a really good supply of organs around here. Um, I will that, say though. Just briefly, I'm going to correct you for a second. Not it was like a great supply necessarily, but it's a great company um, called Force of Nature that we mm-hmm. can find. I think you can find it in Whole Foods. I know we can find it in our two local um, grocery stores. It's not at all the or anything like that, but it does have um, a ancestral blend, mm. one that has the right. beef liver and heart and stuff like that. So. You can find it, but I, I agree with you where it's not kind of like, just like, oh, I'm going to go eat some more. So right. I, we kind of started that way, actually. Yes. And that was kind of a cool way to get like, okay, like I can make this into a burger. Yes. I'm fine. You and know, I, will, fine. I, I will have to put on my list of videos to make, but I will show you how you can make the most delicious gravy out of organ meat and perfectly oh, yes. legal. It's it's fantastic. fantastic. Um, so anyways, <laughs> so yeah, so organs are something that, you, and, and we're talking about everything. Uh, you know, uh, he talks about brain, heart, you know, uh, kidney, stomach, intestines, testicles. you know, testicles. <laughs> it's pretty clear that the animal foods, meat and organs are the center of the human diet. When I started looking at the medical literature, you find nutrients right. in meat and especially in organs that have been studied in amazing context. Interventional studies that slow cognitive decline in the elderly, that improve mental strength, focus, and mental endurance. It's amazing what's out there. I mean, Mm. creatine alone. So creatine is in meat, but it's also in organs. Mm. When you deprive humans of creatine, they get less smart. And when you give creatine back to vegetarians or vegans, they get smarter. If everyone had the chance to go and live with the Hadza or live with other hunter-gatherers, I think it would click for so many of us. There's no vegans out there, man. They're thinking, where's the meat? Where are the organs? Is there fruit in season? Can we find a beehive and get some honey? That's about it, man. Yeah. So really, and it's it's interesting because it seems like the the organ that you eat from the animal is going to benefit the, that organ in your body, which is really interesting. If you can't stomach that, which I understand, it's a it's a different way of, of life for a lot of us. Um, you know, Paul Saldino has a company called Heart and Soil, uh, and they do make desiccated uh, capsules with desiccated organs that you can take yeah. um, as a capsule. Probably not as good as just, you know, getting an organ and, and eating it. But, you know, I think that this is, you know, a, a way that you can ease into it. And we're doing, we're going to try some of those supplements too. Yeah. So we'll probably do a video there, on this. There are too. other companies that do that yeah. as well. But he, but he also recommends too, like, <laughs> yeah. for example, liver is something that most people can get. And if you can get good grass fed liver, uh, and again, I would recommend getting grass fed uh, for, again, another video that we could do on grass fed versus grain finished meats. But if you get a good grass fed liver, he, he he recommends cutting it into you know half ounce pieces and freezing it and then popping it like a pill and you can just swallow it. Yeah. Um, so those are other ways that you can get organs into your diet. The next three are basically the macronutrients that Macros, you want yeah. to to handle, and that's uh, you know protein, fat, and carbs. So we'll start with protein. Um, he has if you go to carnivoremd.com, that's Paul Saladin's website. He has a calculator there that allows you to calculate your macros for your activity level and your weight. But basically, rule of thumb is for men, it's about 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram. For women, I believe it's about 0.8 grams per kilogram. So for a average size male, you're looking between anywhere between 160 to 190 grams of protein a day. Um, so that that's your, your starting point. Uh, and that you're going to get that through your organ meats. You're going to get that through your raw dairy. You're going to get that through your, you know, muscle meat that you're eating regularly. Um, fat is the next one. So for those of you who have been doing keto for a long time or carnivore, you get this, you understand this. Uh, for those of you who are new to this way of eating, it's a scary thought to think that fat doesn't make you fat. Um, and it doesn't, it actually is the opposite effect. Um, and (laughs) saturated fat does not lead to heart attacks. Those are all, we're just going to throw out all the myths here. Throw them all out. Um, you know, it's okay to have fat in your diet. In fact, it's good for you to have fat and saturated fat in your diet. Um, now obviously if you have a medical condition or something along those lines, well, you know, you can, you can work that out, but most people, I think that, that fat is a safe bet for you to eat. Mm -hmm. Um, and you should, 
have that right about, uh, I would say 150, 130 to 150 grams of fat a day. Um, you can play with that macro depending on how your, your calorie range goes. Well, like um, you said, they can go to his website yes. if they want to do this. And he has a little thing in there and you can right. put in your goal weight and it'll give you your it'll, own. It'll spit it out for yeah. you. Okay. And then the last one, the controversial one is carbs. Um, so carbs, <laughs> carbs are the uh, the secret ingredient to this animal-based <laughs> diet, I guess. It's and like Fat Bats where he goes, carbs are the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts my feelings. You know, I tried going on a diet once. The zone, you know, carbs are the enemy. But the portions were so wee, I ate the delivery man. <laughs> so it's it's interesting, but not just carbs. Like not the, most people think of carbs, you think of pasta, rice, bread. bread. Um, this is carbs from fruit, honey, and maple syrup. Those are the three places to get your carbs. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, really, he says and dairy. And and dairy too, a yes, bit, dairy yeah. too. Like like <clears throat> kefir and all that have Sorry. all the yogurt have carbs as well. Are you saying kefir like he kefir. does? <laughs> That's I. I'm just I'm just saying like he does. I don't know how it's pronounced. I don't know how it's pronounced. Either. Let us know in the comments how you pronounce how it. How do you pronounce it? <laughs> it's actually pretty delicious though when you make it. Uh, so we make it into smoothies, and like I said, I think we're gonna do a video on we eat like this for two weeks, and we'll show you a day of, you know, some things you can make and how we eat like this. But any sweet fruit. Uh, will work. Uh, we recommend eating in season for your area if you can. Yeah. Um, and I think you have a little website, and maybe we can post some of these websites in the comments that will tell you what fruits are in season at what times. And actually, if you sign up um, for text messages from his company, they send you. It's very, very nice and sweet. They send you. They actually sent me a text saying like, hey, by the way, in March, this, this, and this is starting to come in season. So I was like, oh. Yeah, it's nice so, information to have. So. so I would stop, you know, stop getting, stop buying strawberries in October. You don't, yeah. you know, the, the, don't buy them in the dead of winter. <laughs> right, that's not, you know, in the winter you should be eating pomegranate and oranges and you know right. that type of stuff. Whatever is in season. The summer it's melons and and you know things like that. Autumn it's apples and eat organic and eat what's in season uh, for yes. your carbs. Uh, and for honey, uh, make sure it's raw honey. Uh, you know, don't buy any raw or unf- raw. Bleh. Don't buy any pasteurized or filtered honey. You want raw honey, raw organic, yeah. raw organic, unfiltered, and local if you can find it. Yes. So that's it. That's the that's the additions. Those are the additions. Yeah. So love that. I love <laughs> I love this guy. Yeah. Um, because I think that he is not afraid to think differently. Um, and that's really from, that's what I'm getting from his podcast. Like he wasn't afraid to, although he, he said it was scary to, um, to change and go from being like, oh, he's the carnivore MD to now, I'm sorry, some of y'all carnivore people, like a traitor, like he's a traitor because he eats fruit. And that's just really kind of silly to me. If you really feel that way. Um, then you know maybe you have a problem. And, and I think it's because some people feel like he's misinforming people. And, and I would say to you, like, other people can make their own decisions. You don't have to, like, you don't get to tell people what to do. Right. We're not telling anyone what to do. We're just saying what we're doing. And in reviewing him and, like, watching all of his stuff, I was like, I like the way that he talks. I like the way that he talks about health. Um, that health is our birthright i believe that and i like the word birthright Mm. that that is all of our birthrights that all of us are homo sapiens and that i believe the homo sapien organism has an incredible potential that is not realized very often in today's world because we don't give enough attention to the conditions that are necessary to uh, bring forth that incredible potential that we have so i think radical health is just a full expression of the potential of all of us in our daily lives, in our family lives, in our work lives, in our our romantic lives, in our personal lives, in our, you know, in our play lives, on the volleyball, wherever we want to be. Like yeah. it's a full expression of the potential that we have as humans. I'm like, I've never heard anyone talk like this, let alone a doctor. It's amazing to me. And he talks about radical health and what that means to him. And it was just, it was kind of just, it was very cool to to watch him 
Um, and I don't know him from the carnivore days, so I can't really, I guess maybe, maybe people felt betrayed. I'm not really sure. Let us know in the comments. If you did. <laughs> No, we would love to have these discussions. Yeah. We'd love to hear from you. No, I I agree. I, I think that's fine. And I'm fine with hate, too. If you want to hate me, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care. She, she lives on it. She thrives. I don't. No, but I don't. I also don't really care because I don't take anything personally. Oh, that's right. Um, Check out the four agreements video. <laughs> but um, and there was another thing. There was an, another thing that he said that I wanted to say that he said that we live in a human zoo mm. and then we don't know that the door is unlocked and we can and we can leave at any time and the reason i draw the parallels because i think that we are domesticated humans i've mm. talked about this we live in a human zoo and there are ways to step outside the cage doors the cage doors are open you could just there are ways to do this but it it means bringing the ideas of how we've lived in the past into our quote modern lives and i was like Dude, you're blowing my mind right now. <laughs> it just, it, it, what he says sort of sort of speaks to me. But I will say, um, I, I'm gonna, I will have a criticism, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. We can do our criticism, yep. and then I have a ton of positives, too. But um, I would say the one, one criticism that I have is he doesn't live in Northeast Ohio <laughs> like like I do. I loved watching his, like, kind of his day. Like, you know, influencers do that. Um, here was my day of eating. And, you know, he goes, he surfs for a couple hours a day. And listen, more power to him. And I know he gets raked over the coals for that stuff. He's single, I think. Or he, he doesn't, he's not married as far as I know. I don't know if he's dating somebody. But he, and he doesn't have children. So I think that's, a criticism of him like oh you can do this you can go to live in Costa Rica and just pull a banana and a coconut off a tree and there you go but I don't necessarily like I don't it doesn't make me upset at him it just makes me chuckle a little bit yeah. <laughs> because like go out and get some sun like oh what's the sun right <laughs> We, we haven't it. we haven't seen that since September. I so. haven't seen the sun for six months. That's so true. It was out the other day. Yeah, it was, it's actually <laughs> very nice. But yeah, I think that I think that that's the the point is is you have to you have to make this a deliberate and that's what he's done. I mean, yeah, if you think about it, that move to Costa Rica was a deliberate move for his health, and you know yeah. that was one of my criticisms as well. Um, you know, I'm going to be traveling for work next week. It's going to be really hard to not get seed oils. It's going to be really hard to not get high fructose corn syrup. To not get those things. It's tough because when you eat out, you don't know. Uh, you know, he went into Chipotle and asked them, you know, Chipotle. Like everybody thinks Chipotle is healthy. He asked them, "What do you use for your grills? Your griddles?" Contains three tablespoons of seed oils. Can you tell me what kind of oil the meat is cooked in? Rice bran oil. Okay. To get this amount of oil from rice, you would need. 24 cups of brown rice. This is why seed oils are completely evolutionarily inconsistent for humans. These oils are very high in linoleic acid, an omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid that wreaks havoc in your body, in your cell membranes, in your mitochondria. Humans would never have gotten this much linoleic acid evolutionarily. We would never have eaten 24 cups of brown rice in a day, but now you can easily get three tablespoons of rice bran oil in your burrito or burrito bowl at Chipotle, and no one is thinking about how harmful these seed oils are in their bodies. You gotta know what the restaurants you're eating at are cooking in. Things like canola, sunflower, safflower, soybean, grapeseed, or rice bran oils. Get these oils out of your diet completely. It is a criticism because you have to be careful and you have to be really deliberate. We're making some steps to make sure that I can limit the amount of you know, time that I go out to eat. Yeah. Um, you know, my advice that, you know, for those of you who do travel, if you can get Airbnb, um, do that because a lot of times you can get your own kitchen and then you can make your own food and you're set. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't do that for work, I can't do that for this job. Um, maybe in the future I can, but I have been able to do that in the past. Um, you know, right now we, they make our you know, hotel arrangements for us. So I, I can't really do that, but you know, I'm going to be taking a blender with some eggs and fruit and cream and that's yeah. what I'm going to have for breakfast every day. And you know, some jerky and, you know, fruit and all that stuff. So there, there are ways to do it. It's just you're going to have to really plan ahead. Yeah. It's not a negative comment about him. It's more of a negative comment about society. Yes. In <laughs> yes, it is definitely our, about society. In for our sure. food 
That is no longer really food. Yes. When That's... your government is telling you that Fruit Loops are healthier than steak, you've got a problem. There's a problem there. And we'll talk, big... we could talk about that some other time. Yeah, That's we, the new we food. Will, we will the new food pyramid. <laughs> um, but anyway, so the positives are just his enthusiasm for life. Yeah. And obviously, I think he's got a pretty good life. I would be enthusiastic too if I had that life. But um, I think um, we want to do a video on how we yeah. how we like Paul Saladino, and and we will. Um, but my my biggest positive was that kind of just to dovetail of what you just said, he goes into places, he checks online that Chick Fil A uses seed oils, and you know he's not an influencer who's like. Hmm. What can I go? What can you get on a carnivore diet at McDonald's or Chick Fil A? He's mm-hmm. like, no, don't no, eat there. Don't eat there. <laughs> right. And I and I guess that would maybe dovetail again into a criticism, is because I think a lot of people are going to be like, this is too expensive. I can't do this because he really stresses the quality of food. Yeah. But that should make you not mad at Paul Saladino. That should make you mad at the system that we live in, that we have to be a part of and maybe um, spur you on to change that system because I know that it's really helped us. We're like, okay, we need to find a farmer and you know, we, we're going to go find some raw cheese somewhere or whatever. Um, that should not make you mad at him because yeah. he's, he's doing all the right things, obviously, so... Yeah, and I mean, I don't want to advertise for him, but if you are interested in finding out more about him, um, carnivoremd.com is his website. He has a podcast Why called... Why don't you want to advertise him? <laughs> well, I think we should. You know, hey, <laughs> like us the sponsor. Um, I always joke about that. Uh, no, so carnivoremd.com is his website. He has a podcast called Fundamental Health, which is really good. Yeah. Uh, and then he has his YouTube channel, which I believe is just... Paul, Car- is it no, Carnivore MD? I think it's Carnivore MD. I don't if think you he just go, it. If you just go on YouTube and search but Paul Saladino, you'll, yeah, find, you'll it. find it. Yeah, you'll find it. So, so, do you right. have any more positives that you wanted to say? Or we're going to save that for our. Yeah, I think we'll save a lot of those. I think we've, okay. we're going to have some the interesting positives results. about him. Like radical health. I love that. I love that dude. Thank you. <laughs> that, that's awesome. And he, he thinks differently. And I'm always attracted to those types of people who are willing to go outside of the norm and think. For themselves. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so, but that's it. I think that's our review. That was, okay. That was pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> All right. So I think the next thing we'll do is pick our next topic. Oh. And so I've got an, another, a different hat here today. It's a little bit of a mm-hmm. fancier hat. So fancy. I will let Ashley go ahead and pick. Mm. She's going to close her eyes. No, you're so nice. <laughs> okay. And... Oh, <laughs> this is fun. Oh, this is one of his. This is one of his no nos too. Uh-oh. <laughs> so it's um, coffee. Some say yes, some say no. Uh oh, somebody's in trouble. <laughs> I don't know about this one. You I'm might actually kidding. see a fight on this one. So, <laughs> all right, so we'll get we'll get working on that one too. Yeah. So, all right, thanks, guys. You're supposed, to, you. say, you're supposed to say thank you to people. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you in advance for subscribing. Yeah. Smash that subscribe. Oh. You're cutting that okay. out. You're not doing that. <laughs> I was doing it sarcastically. No, I'm going to keep it. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's it. We'll, we'll talk at you later. Okay.